Hey, welcome to Jack's Tech Corner and Photography Weekly. This is episode number 64 for Sunday, October the 14th, 2012. Coming up in today's show, with all the new viewers out there, I thought it was time for us to do a little refresher. And, you know, we're going to uh, put out a new part of this show each week. And the new part of the show is going to be called Help the Rookies. Okay? Because I don't like that word, newbie. I think that's kind of a weird word. So... We're going to say help the rookies, and uh, together we're going to help move these people that's just coming to the show and coming on board here. Get them up to snuff to, uh, you know, where they want to be. I get tons of emails every week that says, Jack, can you just stop and go back to the basics? Because we missed all of that. So we can't do all this advanced stuff until they know the basics. So now we're going to have help the rookies. And today in the segment help the rookies, this week is cleaning up a picture with Photoshop Elements. So even if you're an old pro out there, I know I have a lot of you, stick around because it's a great little refresher. It never hurts to get refreshed on the tools and to learn them a little bit once again. Then, like I said earlier to a few of you out there, I am getting ready to do a photo shoot today, uh, which is a big deal here because it's a portable studio, right? You got to take everything with you. And we're going to go over exactly what do you take in a portable studio and why would you take it on this particular shoot? Then we're going to have our tribute to the gnome. I mean, assignment 63. I had so many great photos come in from you guys out there. Uh, pictures that, for some reason, you think that I have this um, weird affection to my gnome. This weird thing. Hey, he's my photo buddy. You know, you got to get one of those because family members, as soon as you pull that camera out with the family members, what do they do? They go running, right? They, no, no, don't shoot me. Well, I got the gnome, so he's my old photo buddy. And I take a lot of pictures of him out there just to practice. So with that said, we have a big, big uh, show here today. And then I'll give you your assignment after we do our tribute to uh, assignment 63. So let's go get started this week with episode number 64. Okay, like we always say, let's get started, right? We got to start somewhere. We got to be able to learn and we got to be able to pick this stuff up together, you know, because grabbing this camera, folks, and just going out there and shooting pictures, we can all do that. You know what? We can throw it on automatic and the camera's going to do a really nice job for you and take a really beautiful picture. But you know what I found in doing these shows in the past couple years now? People have a creative mind. They want to know how to use it. They want to know how to take the camera and say, here's what really messes you up when you take this camera out and you take that picture and you go you get home you put on a computer and say that's not what i've seen the sky was blue or you know or the sky was more red uh, more like a sunset you come home and the sky's all blown out and white and you're like how did that happen so that's why this show is here that's why i love doing these and as i stated here in the opening we got to bring these new folks along with us we get a lot of new people in our facebook group a lot of new youtube viewers every week and a lot of new uh, folks on this live show so that's why we're stepping back a little bit so first we're going to give our official shout outs like we do every week because i'm glad everybody comes in here and you know what it's because of you that makes this show worthwhile so let's see here we'll give some official shout outs we got jake the snake jody june kathy hey the noodle hey morning zach there 812 we got the user 4278 and user Jeff in there this morning. And, you know, if you're watching this show on Justin TV and you're kicking back, you're relaxed, you know, come over to our live chat room because I believe the chat is what makes these live shows so important. If we just want to sit and be one-sided, sit and watch your television set and you're going to see everything one-sided, the guy's telling you what to do and you're like, okay, well... This way we can actually get some feedback, and I like getting feedback from you guys, the viewers out there. So that's why we have these shows, and that's how they work. So I need your questions to keep making them even better. So as I said today, not the official shout-outs are over with there. Let's go ahead. We're going to jump right into our lesson this week, 
And today's lesson is for all my new folks out there. The new folks or just the people that say, Jack, man, I haven't cleaned a picture up for a while. I need a refresher. And hey, guys, I need a refresher on these tools also, right? The tools are there. We know how to use them. But let's play around a little bit with the couple pictures I have here that I took yesterday. And I'm thinking, did I take them both? Yes, I did take them both yesterday, actually, uh, at a local festival. So we're going to go ahead and clean those up. So let's go ahead and get started with these pictures. And then we'll come back and we'll answer your questions and go through the chat room a little bit there. So let's go ahead and get started here on our new segment called Help of the Rookie. All right. We got to get some of these windows out of the way first of all. Get that going. And um, then we'll get started here. Let me uh, bring another camera up here. Okay, so now we're on this camera. And we can go ahead and I'll set my screen up here so we can start working with these couple pictures I want to work with this morning. It's kind of nice now too because I got the chat room opened up all around here. Uh, let's see. Just going to grab our uh, tool here so we can actually get this all in here so you guys can see this. And we'll get started in some editing. And I have learned in doing these shows for a while, if you really, really, really want to get to the point uh, where you can see what's going on, make the screen full screen, and then you can see everything that's happening. Uh, you're going to lose the chat room for a little bit, but sometimes it's better just to get the understanding of the um, program and to be able to see what's going on. Okay. So I shot this shot yesterday, and, you know, everybody likes the particulars. What did you shoot it on? How did you shoot that shot? Actually, this shot was shot with a 50 millimeter lens. That's the only lens I put on my camera yesterday. And I'll be showing you soon here with the equipment I'm taking on the photo shoot today, um, how I carried my camera. But the only lens I had with me is a 50 millimeter. So that's pretty cool in itself because you have to learn how to use your lenses. Now, with that said, I turned and I shot this picture. Um, and if I'd have to guess, I would say aperture is probably f9. And I usually shoot about 1 25th of a second uh, when I'm outdoors just to get shots like this where everything's in nice focus and everything's sharp. But when I, as soon as I shot this picture, I turned to my wife and I said, I can't believe I did that. She said, what did you do? I said, I got a trash can in the back and this lady's legs. Really not what I wanted to do. I wanted to make it a lot cleaner. So... What we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and we're going to just edit that out. Now we are using Photoshop Elements 10 is what we're using. But this will work in pretty much any Photoshop Elements version from, I believe, 9, either 8 or 9 up. And the reason that is, I'm going to show you the tool here I'm using. I think it came out in Photoshop Elements 8. So whenever I work on an area, the first thing I want to do with that area is I want to blow it up so I can see it, right? We don't want to have to struggle when we're working on things. So I'm going to blow this up just a little bit here. A little bit more. Right about there. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to start using our tools to get rid of that trash can. What tools do we want to use? I like using one of the favorite tools of mine is the spot healing brush. And then we're going to be using the clone stamp tool. Those are two of my favorite tools. And the reason that's two of my favorite tools is because it work, they just work so great. It, it's really easy to use these tools. So the first thing we probably want to do is we're going to duplicate that background. So just do a Control or Command J and duplicate that background. So we're always working on just a duplicated copy. 
You can shut this off if you wish. It doesn't make any difference because we're working on the layer that's selected. Now, we have our tool selected. And what you're going to try to do first is we're going to try to go over this can. And I'm going to try to do it really large here just to see what would happen. Because what's happening right now is Photoshop Elements is taking a sample of the top, the bottom, and the sides. Sampling all around that can to see if you can get rid of it. Now you see, it did a pretty good job, but if you can see right up in here now, up here at the top, right here, it took this red mark because it picked it up from down in here somewhere. And it, so it's sampling everything. Let me go back once because how's it sampling, folks? It's sampling because up here we have content aware turned on. If you can see it right there. Make sure I have my mouse uh, selected, which I don't believe I do. Content aware is right there at the top. That's content aware, okay? It's turned on, so it's picking up whatever's around there, and that's just how it's selecting things. Now, if you run into this and you say, well, that could be problematic, and the reason is it's because the can is so big and we're trying to sample so much at one time. You may instead want to use clone stamp. So, Let's go ahead and do that. We'll go back up here. We're going to undo the spot healing brush because it didn't really work out for us. And we'll go to clone stamp. Now, when you go to clone stamp, what you're going to do here is sample. So you hold the alt key down. And we're going to take a sample of this grass right here, let's say. And then we're just going to simply go over top of this. And I just kind of click, and you can actually click that can right out of there. I don't like to ordinarily work with the brush that size. If you can see that brush, I don't like to work with that brush that size. It's too big to sample. So let's go back again. And we'll go back again here. You can see there how it kind of pulled it apart. All right. Now let's do duplicate that background. What we're going to do this time is we'll make the brush size lower. So let's make a smaller brush. Now let's pick up a sample as close as we can. And the reason we pick up the samples as close as we can is to try to keep the lighting as close as we can with whatever is lit or how it's lit in the background there. So we're going to pick it up over here. And we'll pick it up over here. And now you can see that you're starting to get rid of this a little bit at a time. And you can click and drag over it too, but you got to be careful. Make sure you watch what you're doing. And I like to keep resampling. Every time you hold the Alt key down, you can see the little bullseye there. That's where you're sampling from. And it's hard up here because we got two different tones because we got this can and we got that garbage bag to deal with. All right. So you can see, actually, the, the truth behind all this editing is, to be honestly with you, I should have watched and not got this garbage can in my picture. Then I wouldn't have to take it out. And actually, as soon as I did notice it, I did turn and I took another shot, which I could show you um, that I do not have the trash can in. But I thought, when I shot it, I thought, boy, that's going to be a great picture to use uh, on class. So, click here again, and we're just dragging here, folks, cleaning this up. And again, when you keep resampling, if we, if we clone this and this grass here with this greener grass up on top, it's not going to look right. So, keep resampling as you move around to make sure you're picking up the exact colors that you want to work with. And as you get closer, like we're getting close to that plane... What's going to happen there is we're going to have to actually lower our brush size. Which we'll do. First, I want to get rid of all this stuff here. And 
here. We just get this out of here. I see in the chat room of some of you out there using actual the actual full blown Photoshop. I do have CS6 on the computer here, but uh, I've always taught newer people. Uh, anytime you're new and into photography at all, I always teach using Photoshop Elements. And the reason I like to do that is because it has so many wizards, it makes it simplified for you to find things, and it allows you to just be creative and not have to worry about digging around for stuff like Photoshop does. You know, and I know it's kind of funny because I, I've noticed lately, even the high-end cameras that... And I don't know about the Canon because I shoot Nikons, but I'm sure the Canon does it. But the new Nikon D600, actually, it's a full-frame camera with screen modes or with preset modes uh, like scene, night, sports. And why do they do that? You know why they do that? Because they're making it for the consumer, right? They don't just want the highly trained photographer to go get one of those. They want you guys and me to go out and buy one, just the consumer guy. Okay, now, as you can see, there's a sore spot right here. That trash can is actually behind that. That should have been a little cutout right there. So I'm going to go down here somewhere and sample. I'm going to try to get right in here and take that out. All right. Now we have the garbage can pretty much removed to my liking. We can go back here. Let's go to our... Um, magnifying glass here and go fit the screen and you can see now we got rid of that trash can using the clone stamp tool so it's gone the woman's feet still there and you think well jack now you gotta go up and clone all that out oh, that's a big mess and no you don't because that's just too much overbearing so we're gonna actually take this oops and we're just gonna come right across here and we're gonna come right down to here and probably pull it down a little bit more. Right about there. And there we go. Now we got her feet gone. We got the garbage can gone. Everything's out of there. Now it looks really, really good. And it's good to go. That is how you clean up a picture if you happen to get home and you're like, oh, I made a big mistake. Now, here's another picture I want to work on right here. And this one was even more challenging. This one you have to really, really think. Now, pay attention to this one because this is what's going to be. Um, could You could see this again on your homework assignment. So let's pay attention. If we use the uh, spot healing brush with content aware I thought well I'll just make this bigger and this chain should go away I'm going to pull over this chain and let's see what happens alright it made that tire kind of weird looking if you can see that it put the green on there it picked up stuff from outside of that actual tire itself so I did not want that so what I want to do with that instead is we're going to go back, undo, do a Commander Control J again to duplicate your background image. And this time we're going to take a sample. So we're going to use our eyedropper tool, take a sample of that color, grab your paintbrush, and just go right over this. And I try to paint it with the tread. You don't want it too big because I found that it's going to turn out really, really bad if you do it too big. Because it's black, it's pretty easy to hide using black, right? We're just basically painting. Now this tire, just to make sure it's the same color, and I say that because the lighting could be off a little bit. It's still coming up pretty black. And let's go ahead and cover this one up. Again, I just do it just a little bit at a time. I'm not rushing it. Just like so. Now, there you go. So that looks pretty good. Now there's chains coming out of the tire that make no sense whatsoever. We have to get rid of those chains. Now I went ahead and I said, well, now I'm going to use the clone stamp tool or the spot healing brush. And now I'm going to go in here 
And we're going to try to use this. We're going to attempt to use this spot healing brush. First, we're going to try it right here on this post. And folks, when I first did this too, I thought, you know what? It's not going to work. It's too big. Let's see what happens this time. It's actually doing its magic there. It's doing some uh, healing. And there you go. Actually, it's not too bad, right? The post is gone. Um, we see a little bit of problems in there with that chain, but we can clean that up. So let's go in here now. We're going to try to just go right across here and see what happens. Once again, I'm just using the content aware. All right, we can clone stamp that up. But let's go up here now in this chain. We're going to get right down to here. I also found the closer you sample, sometimes the better off you are. Because if you sample too wide, you're getting too much information for the program. So we're going to do it up here now. Right here. And what's really cool about this, it's sampling to the left and to the right is what it's looking at. And it's picking up the colors it needs from the left and the right. So it doesn't really matter the shapes. It actually is cleaning it up pretty well. Like, you can't really see in here that that chain was there because the shapes are kind of molded together. And it just works. Let's go over here. And we'll get rid of this piece of chain here. And we're going to get rid of the piece of chain over here. And there you go. Like I said, this right in here, we can just go back and we can use the clone stamp tool. Uh, we can stamp this. And we'll make this a little bigger. We can also, folks, if you looked uh, before when I was telling you about painting, watch, we can do this too. Uh, sometimes I like to paint stuff out. It seems to work well for me. And if you want to make it believable, I would just paint this all right here, just a little bit darker green. Then it kind of just blends together. Something like that. All right. Now, I'm going to give you a leadway into your assignment this week. Um, we're going to give it to you just a little bit earlier here because your assignment this week is going to actually be working on this. Um picture and what we're going to be doing well you know what i'm not going to tell you what you're going to be doing because we're going to wait to the end of the show and i'll tell you that um i have to have cliffhangers right and let's get right in here looks like somebody has some gum wrappers in there or something i'm not sure what was in there but you can already see the picture is much more pleasing without that post in front of it without a garbage in front of it and I always say when you're editing your pictures, the people that are looking at them were not there, most likely. I mean, you might have some family members that might have been with you or something, but most times they're not there. So that is why the pictures come out really, really well. All right. Now let's bring this up. Okay, what I'm stopping in here for, I'm seeing if there's any questions in the chat room. If anybody has any questions, now's a great time to throw those out there. Um, I actually see in there that uh, the Noodle uh, 812 went out shooting last night in D.C. Uh, at night. Boy, I tell you, that's a great time to shoot D.C. is in the evening because there's some beautiful lights, uh, some beautiful architecture around there to shoot. Uh, got a lot of um, monument pictures. And um, he was 
thinking of a lot of HDR stuff. So always think that way. Um, I watched a photographer recently, and he said everything he shoots, he shoots bracketed. Now, and if you're new to the show, don't worry about, oh, my God, I don't know what bracketed is. He just said a big word. All that is is allowing the camera to take three shots, one normal exposure, one under, and one over. And this guy doesn't even do it for HDR. He does this for the only reason is when he goes back to the studio and he throws them on his computer and he starts looking at them, he goes, you know, he don't know if he likes the normal uh, shot. Maybe he likes the underexposed shot a little bit better or the overexposed shot. Or if push comes to shove, you can do an HDR and get the best of the, all three worlds. So, you know, and myself and the noodle uh, went out one weekend. We shot, we shot everything in burst of three just to have them. Not to say you're going to use them for HDR, but it's a good way to do things. Uh, Serena, good morning to you. Said you're listening, but you're editing, and I know you're editing because you shot your uh, family or your <laughs> high school reunion last night, and I'm glad. Hope that worked out well for you. Jeff said he just got CS6, and it's very expensive. CS6 is so expensive, it's unbelievable what they charge for that. And Kathy said it's on her wish list. So, folks, with that said, I'm going to go down. I'm going to fill the coffee cup up here. And get started for the second half of the show. And that's going to leave you with my three-minute little advertisement from our sponsors. And uh, i like to really thank all of our sponsors. They do a wonderful job with the show. Uh, you know, and that's what helps to bring these shows out there to you. That and your generosity on your side with the donations. And so many of you out there purchasing the DVDs and uh, helping the show out that way. Or taking the Lightroom Online class. That also helps. Everything helps us out. And we're going to go ahead and show you the ad from the sponsors and I'll be right back to go into our second half of the show. I'd like to thank you once again for watching Photography Weekly each and every week and I wanted to say a special thank you and a little short commercial break here for our sponsors of this show. First and foremost let me uh, send out my uh, special uh, invitation to you there to come over to jackstechcorner.com I have a brand new Elements 10 Volume 1 DVD and it's going for $20 and if you pull this pull down menu down you'll see a lot of other options in there for you also or if you'd rather instead of learning uh, on a DVD and if you have high speed internet you may want to sign up for one of my online classes the online classes are there for you, and they are on uh, Lightroom 4 for all. It's a very easy way to learn Lightroom 4. And there is a uh, Elements 10 class, actually the one on DVD, that will be coming out as a online class. So you will have actually that option also. Next, let me thank our friends over at Smug Mug. Smug Mug is where I do all my professional printing at, and I wish that you would sign up also. If you go to my website, jackstechcorner.com, on the left-hand side, there's links. If you click on that link and enter the special code, you'll get a 20% discount. And that's huge because the pro version is $150. So if you take 20% off of that, you're going to be good to go. You save a ton of money and start making money right away. Or you can use them for all your personal printing needs for whatever type of photography printing you want to do. Next, if you do any green screen photography, then check out Ken's site, greenscreenwizard.com. Once again, go to my website, jackstechcorner.com. Click on the link on the left, and that way Ken will know that you're coming from Jack's Tech Corner. Once again, that's greenscreenwizard.com for all your green screen photography and now video needs and special hello and thank you to our friends over at amazon.com if you're buying anything from amazon and man don't we all buy from amazon anyway go to my website jackstechcorner.com on the left again click on the link to go to amazon before you buy anything that gives us a, like a one percent uh, deal there of your total sell so it helps the site out here it helps us out and it keeps it to, so we can buy new equipment to keep bringing you these great shows and keep on going. So if you're buying from Amazon, just go ahead and click that link and buy as you normally would. And I'd like to thank our HDR sponsors, HDR Soft and Photomatics. 
Photomatix does a great job. I'm using the Pro version now, Photomatix Pro 4.2, and the Lightroom plugin, and it is absolutely fantastic how it's integrated with Lightroom. So once again, that's Photomatix by HDR Soft, and you'll find those at hdrsoft.com. Download the trial version today. You won't be upset or disappointed. So that's it. Let's get back on to the show here and more learning. Okay. <laughs> so All right. Hopefully I didn't make that back too late. Hopefully I was pretty much on time. And uh back with you there. Had to Got to get that coffee cup filled up. That's very important in the mornings, especially when you're doing these shows here. So we do have the chat room open. Whoops. And uh, just making sure it's still online there with me. All right. So now in this portion of the show, what I was going to do here is, as I said, we're getting ready to go out and do a photo shoot. So a lot of people always say, Jack, what do you have in your camera bag? Um, what do you take out to a photo shoot? Now, and as I told uh, the noodle recently, he was actually, um, he was actually uh, here one day, and we were talking about stuff. And I said, "Look, don't get like me, because sometimes I tend to overbuy." Um, but you know, on the other side, of that I like to have more equipment when I go out than what I need, because you don't know what you're walking into sometimes, right? It happens. You know, we go out there, we go to shoot. It's like, wow, um, we didn't bring one day. One day it was something as simple as a screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver, to actually take and hook the flip flash on the bottom of the flash. I needed a flathead screwdriver. So luckily I had a quarter in my pocket and that seemed to work. So there you have it. So there is stuff that you got to worry about with every single shoot. And, you know, I think you have to live it and something has to happen before it works out in your head and you say, wow, I need to actually do this. Now, what am I talking about here? So the first thing we're going to talk about is moving the coffee cup so we don't put anything in it. The first thing we're going to talk about then is what? Our camera. This is the first thing that we're going to have to have is the camera itself. Now, as you see from yesterday, I have my 50 millimeter lens on there, and I like it because it's so lightweight. You can carry this thing around and click all day and not break your arm. It's a very, very nice lens. Now, with that said, I also have other lenses. Um, the 24 by 70, which is a very heavy lens, and you would know, uh, folks out there that's actually purchased one. I have the Sigma. It's a heavy lens. And I also have my 70 by 200 which is also a very, very heavy lens. And this is one of my other favorite lenses. It's called the Tokina, but this is a wide angle lens, a 12 by 24. And I love this lens, I shoot it a lot. And the reason is I like the wide views it gives me. You know, going from 12, really nice and wide, down to that, or <laughs> zooming in tighter, I guess, to 24, which is still pretty wide, right? But it gives you that nice variation range in a very small package and it doesn't weigh a whole lot. So that's another uh, really great lens I like to use a lot. Now, so the first thing I said is the camera. This is the first thing you need to do. I've learned this the hard way. Before you go anywhere, turn the camera on. Look at the battery. Make sure there's enough battery power in your battery itself. Look at the settings on your camera. Turn the camera on manual, and actually, you're going to look at the settings on the top and say, well, okay, I'm going outside. I want to check my ISO setting. It's at 100. That's good enough. My aperture's at F9. 
Yeah, I want to have everything in focus. I'm doing uh, car photography today, so I'm photographing cars, which are pretty big. You know, you don't want to have a real shallow depth of field, although I may try it today. I don't want to start there. And my shutter speed's on 125. My focus is on autofocus, full autofocus with 39 focus points. Now, that may be overkill, but I know if I go up there and start taking some pictures, what's going to happen is I know that the camera's basically ready to go. It's going to capture some pretty decent images for me. Now, and Jake the Snake says, I should have a battery grip for this. Jake, I've never owned a battery grip. Um, I've always turned my cameras this way when I shoot with the uh, <clears throat> with the shutter release down here in the bottom. I'm not really this kind of shooter upside, but I shoot this way. And I've never had a battery grip. I, I just don't know why. I just never actually picked one up. So uh, maybe one day, if I ever go with the full frame, maybe I'll actually pick one of those up. Now... But you guys think I should have a battery grip. And I know uh, the Noodle had one. I think he just got rid of it. I think he left it go. So I'm not really sure if he did or not. Okay. So the camera. We have the settings. We know the settings are all good. And what's nice about the Nikon line. I don't know what cameras you guys are shooting. Here we're going to bring his camera up here. We're going to bring his camera up here. And see if I can't show you this right here right here if you can see that there's a u1 and a u2 now what that allows me to do is set user settings for those so they're pre-programmed modes so when i go to u1 i know that my camera is set up with 1 25th of a shutter speed the aperture is f 5.6 and the iso is at 400 I know if I go into a home somewhere, walk into a house and snap that first picture because the baby's crawling across the floor and you're there to shoot the kids and you take a beautiful baby picture just because they're crawling towards you, the camera's ready to go on U1. If I go to U2, I have that set up at a aperture of F8, the shutter speed of 200th of a second, and my ISO's at 100. I know if I just throw it in U2 and I walk outside, it's going to capture a pretty decent picture. And then I also shoot in manual mode. So those are my main shooting modes, and that's the main ones I want to check before I go out. Make sure your camera is clean. You don't want to go out there with a dirty camera. It's back over here. So make sure your camera is clean and, you know, everything's functioning on it. Make sure your lenses are all clean and ready to go. Now, as you noticed, I took off the chin, the neck strap. Now, the reason is, and a lot of you out there know me, you know that I purchased one of these things. I purchased a Katy or a Caddy strap, and this is the straps. It's a quick strap. So it goes around you like this and it hangs on your side. I did a video, look on YouTube, you'll find it. And it screws into the bottom of the camera. Right into your tripod mount. And it just hangs on your side just like that. So it's pretty doggone secure. Um, this is the D7000. I wouldn't trust it hanging on a piece of string, right? But I had that on me all day yesterday at this uh, event that we went to. And the camera never let go, and I never lost it. And it's nice because the weight is distributed across your body instead of across your neck. One thing that's also nice, look on the bottom. There's also a threaded hole on the bottom. And I use that for the tripod mount. You can put that right on the bottom itself. All right. So that's the strap that I take with me camera with formatted memory cards i make sure those are cleaned off and ready to go because i don't want to have all my pictures intermingling with each other it just doesn't make good sense the lenses i showed you i have the lenses the next thing we take with us here is my wireless triggers now this happens to be the impact triggers and i know of a lot of other triggers out there that a lot of people are using that are working just fine but these are the impact triggers, and I like these. They fire 100% of the time. But you know what? To be honest, they're relatively ex expensive. Uh, because if I wanted to buy another transceiver, this part, or receiver, for my flash, 
I'm going to spend another like $80 for just this one part. The set together is like a hundred and a half, but that's like 90 bucks just for that one. You'd almost be better to buy another set, right? Just have two transmitters too, just in case. Or if you have two cameras, you have your flashes out there and have one on each camera. So that might be a way to do it. I've been enjoying the success of the flashes I've been purchasing here lately. And, uh, the speed lights I've been buying is the Young Nuo flash. Can you see that? Here, let's turn this around. The Young Nuo, and this is a YN5602. I just did a YouTube video with the unboxing of this uh, flash here to show you around a little bit. Now, why do I like these things? You know why? Because they're relatively cheap. Um, I have to quit saying that. They're not cheap. Let's say they're relatively inexpensive. Uh, it doesn't cost me a lot of money to get into these extra flashes, you know, so you can have three or four of these things in your bag for about, uh, they're about 60 bucks a piece. Um, there is the, the other flash I had earlier, which was a TT520, which is also a young Nuo flash with a newer name on it, so it's in there, N-E-W-R. That flash I purchased for, you know, you can, you can buy those even uh, cheaper than these ones here, so. Uh, less money. I don't remember exact prices of them. Go back and watch that video and I'm sure you'll be able to see it on that video, the unboxing of the TT520. So you can buy some of these, throw these in your bag. They're nice to have for additional lights. Today we're going to try to use these as slaves. So I'll have to let you know how that goes. Uh, setting these up and using these as slave modes. So we talked about these last week. These are my little gorilla pods um, be taking a couple of those because you might want to throw a flash up in a tree or something that way I definitely have that option I can do that uh, if the car is sitting next to a tree or something I could throw one of these up in the tree and get ready for that shoot I am also taking um, light stands we're also taking numerous light stands actually I have four of them in the bag Because you just don't know. You know, you don't know what you're walking into on these shoots. We're also going to be taking my five-way uh, reflector in case i got to block some light maybe. Um, because you're shooting outdoors. So it gives you a whole new um, experience when you shoot pictures outdoors, folks. And you're trying to you're trying to manipulate the sunlight. When you're manipulating sun, anybody can go out. Now, granted, I'm not taking anything away from anybody on these shows. But let's say most of us out there can go out with a camera. Um, again, you could throw an automatic if you wish, and it's a beautiful sunlit day. You're going to get absolutely beautiful pictures, but you want to be creative. If you want to be creative, learn to shoot with some light and reflectors because the reflectors, you can get light off of the subject. You can put some light on the other side of the face of the subject. Uh, with lighting, I like using light because then I can control the ambient light. I can bring down the outside light and I can light up what I want to shoot. So that's very, very important to me. And I love shooting with light. The other thing that's going with me, I don't have battery packs for these lights, but is a studio light. This light is going with me today because I need a lot of power because I'm taking pictures of a car. Okay, and if you've ever seen a 57 Chevy, it's pretty big. And I have to light the whole car up. But I want to be allowed to drop the ambient light a little bit. So I want to play with this strobe today and see if it's going to uh, give me uh, some kind of light that I want to use. And like I said, if not, I still have the speed lights, but I don't know if they're powerful enough to give me what I need to kick that car in and uh, get everything in, in focus and well lit. So I do have uh, heavy duty light stands for this thing and uh, extension cords because we're going to have to plug it in because like I said, I do not have power packs uh, for this strobe. So we are going to use electricity for it. And luckily where I'm shooting, I'm pretty fortunate to have that available to me, to have that extra electric and uh, be able to run an extension cord out there to that. Just trying to think if there's anything else that you'd want to take on a shoot, maybe some uh, lens cloths, you know, stuff people don't think about. Uh, the screwdriver, make sure you have enough batteries. Um, it's always good to have the um, the rechargeable batteries, but if you don't, at least have a couple extra packs of AA batteries in your bag. Uh, it tends to make the, the camera bag pretty heavy, but what also makes it, it makes it very, very nice for us to be able to make sure we have everything on the shoot that we're going to need. 
So I don't even know how long of a shoot this is going to be today. It's going to start about uh, 12 o'clock, I guess, 12 or 1. And uh, we'll get into it there and get going. So, uh, And I'm sure you guys are going to see, I'm sure you're going to see some pictures from it. Guaranteed you're going to see some pictures if they come out. If it's a total flop, you may never see anything. But uh, I'm sure I'm going to bring you back something here. Okay, so I think that is pretty much everything that I'm going to be taking on the shoot. I did want to show you this, as I showed you, I think, a week or so ago. Camera, or flash brackets. This is where the, um, I actually put this on top of here. My trigger on top, my flash in here. Then I can put an umbrella in here in this flash bracket and put this on a light stand. Or these ones are pretty nice. I still, I got to figure out where I found this one. But there's a screw in the bottom where you can actually put this right onto a tripod if you don't have any light stands. So it works really, really nice. So, and Jake the Snake said this is really a good idea for the uh, folder on Facebook. What's in Jack's camera bag? And you know what? I will type that up. I will do that for you. Um, I'm also thinking of maybe, maybe I need to do a YouTube video. I'll empty the whole camera bag out and I'll show you piece by piece and we'll go through that. And Jake, your camera bag is probably just about as full as mine is by now, buddy, I'm sure. Um, because there's one thing in that camera bag I didn't mention that I will use today that I know Jake purchased and a lot of people don't own one. It's a light meter. If you don't own a light meter and you're going to start doing flash photography work, it's, it's nice to have one. And the reason I say that is even when I first bought it, it's like, why did I buy this? You know, it's a pretty expensive toy. I don't, don't know if I need it, but now that I have it, now that I take it out on shoots, it makes it so much easier to get that camera zeroed in and like I go out I take a shot with my flash poof I look it says f6 shutter speed of 125th uh, ISO of 100 I dial it in my camera pow I'm dead on exposure I love that light meter it saves me a ton of time and it's not trial and error anymore so there you have it that's my word for the light meter. It doesn't really matter which one you bought, you know, as long as you know your light meter and you and you like using it. Um, I don't have any big recommendations recommendations of which one to buy. Um, so, and if you ask me, I tell you I own the uh, Sokina. Is that right? Sokina? I think that's right, Jake. Uh, it's the L358. That's one I own. Um, or Sokonic. I'm sorry. L358 Sokonic is the one I own. And it works very, very well. That was great fun, that gnome at the end there that's all trashed. He's all drunk laying out in the middle thing. and uh, Such creative talent on this show. It's amazing each week on how, how many of you out there and how many people I get that are so creative. You know, I wish you guys could do shows and, and I can watch your shows and I can learn from you also. I mean, um, it's kind of paying it forward, right? Everybody wants to teach everybody else something new. All right, so I'm just going back through. Uh, Jake said that that is correct. The Sekonic L358. I know Jake bought the same one I did uh, because I did a show on it, and he ran out and bought one, so that's pretty cool. Jody said you have one in your Amazon wish list. And like I said, it doesn't really matter what kind of light meter you have. Um, I know Sekonic has a smaller one than the L358. I don't know what the number is. I think it was a 308 or something, but... As long as it gives you everything on it, I don't have my iPhone here. There's also a free app uh, that I showed the noodle on the iPhone called Light Meter. If you do a search for it, it gives you a nice reading for ambient light. It doesn't work for flash. And to me, the reason you want the light meter actually is more for flash. But even so, if you have it, you know, you have your iPhone outside and you hold it up, and all it does is it uses the camera and gives you a basic lighting setup. Same thing, ISO. Um, shutter speed and the aperture setting throw that in your camera you got perfect pictures outside folks i mean they're dead on exposure um, again it's for ambient light but it, it's going to save you a lot of time anyway and jake the snake says he has a face for radio sorry that's okay jake we can record you i can record what you're saying and then we can uh, put you out there somehow that's all right and Serena said her external flash is awesome, and I'm glad uh, that we uh, worked with you, Serena. I'm glad you bought the external flash when you went to do your uh, reunion last night because it would have been hard to do it without it. You know, that pop-up flash in the camera is not real pleasing. 
Um, it causes a lot of work on your end because you got to remove red eye, which takes forever. So, um, and the next thing, Serena, like I said, your next thing you're going to look for then is some kind of triggers um, like these ones. Uh, like I said, these are the impact triggers, but Young Nuo, actually YN, why can't I ever get the spelling of this thing right? Y-O-N-G. N-U-O, Young Nuo triggers look very promising. I've watched a lot of videos recently. Uh, if you're looking for a $30 set of triggers, and you can get you, you get the receiver and the transmitter. Actually, I think they do both for 30 bucks. Try those ones out even, Young Nuo. Uh, you can find those on Amazon. And um, hey, for 30 bucks. I mean, I have some triggers here. I paid $30, well, 20 one set I got here for 20 one set I got here for was, was about 30 and they also work absolutely great. Um, but I sometimes when I'm relying on triggers, and you'll learn this too when you're doing flash and you're doing more and more uh, flash and strobe photography, you want backup equipment. If I'm out there and this thing dies, I mean, I could be in a world of hurt because I can't trigger my flashes any other way. So what I would do is take this off and throw my other set of triggers on there and I'll be good to go. So there you have it. All right, so the assignment for this week, let's bring it up here. See if I can find it. Okay, and I left out one very important part of this edit. <laughs> can anybody spell the trigger? I'm going to put it out there for you, Flyer, here. And uh, you can look up this trigger. It's Y O. N G N U O Young Nuo. If you do a search for that on Amazon and do a search for Young Nuo trigger, I found you'll you'll run right into them. Um, I can't remember the exact number of them now. Maybe it's a 308, or I can't remember to be sure. Um, so don't quote me on that, but definitely look at those. And like for 30 bucks. It seems like a really, really nice one. I was going to buy them just to test them out for you guys, just to see how they did work. But I watched one guy's test, and he was shooting 130-some yards, and the flash was still going off. Pretty doggone amazing. Because you'll never get that far from your flash, uh, to be honest with you. I don't, I don't see that happening. Flyer here, you're very welcome. Uh, I appreciate you being here. And anything I can do to help you out, that's what I'm here for. So that's great. All right, let's go ahead and look at our assignment for this week. And you guys knew it was coming, right? You knew it was coming. You knew it was coming. What's going to happen here is I left the part out of this edit, and I did that for a reason because I want to see how everybody else can handle this edit this week. So this is going to be another easy week. You don't have to get the cameras outside. You don't have to go shooting anything. I'm going to give you the picture, and you are going to fix it. Now, here is the picture, and what we're going to do here this week, I showed you guys how to actually get rid of stuff. And I uh, get everything, you know, off the front of this picture. But I'm going to do this. Here's what I'm going to do. No, not on there. Let's go here. Edit. Revert. All right. So I reverted the picture back to its normal stage. Everything's back in the picture. I want you folks out there to clean this thing up the best you can. And if you noticed before, let me see if I can go back here one second. Right here, when I got rid of that, there's a hole inside of this cannon. Folks, there's no hole inside that cannon because that shouldn't be there. I want you to fix that also. That's a problem because see, you can see the blue through there. That should be a solid piece of cannon right there. I do know that. Also, look at the background. I don't want anything in the background. I want all the poles gone. And if you want to touch it up even more and show me your true editing value, you may want to paint the deck here. Take this, actually, all this. Uh, see where all the paint has chipped off? Maybe repaint that and make it a new picture without all those distractions in there. So it's a nice big edit for you guys to do. I'm sure you're capable of it, everybody watching this show. Once again, I'm using Photoshop Elements uh, 10 right now, but I'm sure 8 has Content Aware, 9 and 10, maybe even 7. I'm not really sure if 7 had it. But this is the picture I will be putting up right there. So there. There it is. And that's the way it works. And that brings us to wrapping up another great show this week with everybody out there. Uh, we had a 
a lot of viewers. I don't know if anybody sees is watching the live channel right now. If you can tell me how many total viewers were in there, we usually yeah, we usually average about twenty five to thirty people, which is pretty good. Uh, I always say when I first started this, um, when I first started this this whole endeavor out to help people uh, with their photography. I used to talk to myself for an hour and I would record it and just stick it on YouTube and Justin TV. But now it seems like it's actually catching on. We're getting more people out there. I do throw it on Google Plus every week. It goes out on Twitter and uh, on our Facebook group every week. And if you're not a member of our Facebook group, come on over and join it. It's Jack's Tech Corner. Just go to groups and search for Jack's Tech Corner. So let me, uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up anyway here um, so I can get uh, loaded up here in the car and get ready to go do the shoot today. Once again, everybody, thanks for joining me here for another Photography Weekly on Jack's Tech Corner. And I hope I'm still bringing programming to you that's viable to you, that's uh, information that you can go out there and use each and every day. And, you know, I also ask you to pay it forward. If you see somebody in the store struggling with which, uh, which kind of camera to buy, Walk up to them and say, hi, you know, I'm a photographer. Maybe I can give you a hand. Because these people in these department stores don't know what they're talking about. The majority of them, you know, they're there to stock the shelves. They're there to um, sell the TV sets. And somebody says, hey, what's the difference between a DSLR and a point and shoot? And they're like, I don't know. So I want you to pay it forward and go out there and help those folks out buying a camera to get them into photography. And then tell them where you learn. Say, hey, you can learn with Jack at Jack's Tech Corner. Uh, tell them where our YouTube videos are, tell them where our Facebook group is, and let's get these new people on board with us here so we can all train together. It's great, great uh, fun to go out there and shoot pictures. It's great fun to edit your work, and it's great fun that we all do it all together. So until next time, as always, keep those shutters clicking, keep your editors editing, get your assignments done, get them in the folder for this week, and I'll see you back here next Sunday for another Photography Weekly. Bye for now.